It's not going to happen anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, the next round is made for the fourth season. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Democrats. Is one expanse of Democratic blue. Because our future depends on it, our job is to make sure that these fine Democratic leaders on this stage this morning are elected, and that when we wake up on November 5th, Barack Obama is on his way to the Oval Office. Our future depends on it. Our future depends on it. I watched the Republican National Convention with my personal view on the future, which are my daughters, Emma and Lindley, who are nine and six years old. And my nine-year-old turned to me after about day three and said, Daddy, why are they so angry? <laughs> now, I don't usually subscribe to sarcasm as a parenting style, but my answer was, well, sweetie, how long have you got? <laughs> My friends, they are angry because they know that they are not the future of this country, and we know that we are. So, that our job is to do what we do with lifelong Democrats, and we know that our job is special this year. It's not just to stand for those values that our party has always fought for over the generations of justice, of equality, of all the things that we call the American dream. My friends, this year, our mission is more sacred and more noble than that. We are standing up to repair a country. It will be all of us as Democrats who say that never again will an American working family go bankrupt because they don't have access to health care because we will bring universal health care. Whether that child is born in Westport or Enfield or New London or St. Louis or Los Angeles or Bridgeport, never again will a child fail to meet its full potential because we will make it a priority to make sure that our system of education is the envy of the globe. He said, we will make it our job to make sure that whether you are in Westport or Bridgeport or Hartford or Los Angeles or Pakistan or Egypt or South America or Canada, when you think of the United States, you do not think of Guantanamo, but you think of those sacred words, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all in the ancient languages, means blessing. I'm standing here as an elder in the Presbyterian Church to tell you that the scriptures show us very clearly that we can embrace a blessing or we can waste a blessing. And though our mission this year is sacred and noble, we can waste this blessing. Because although our mission is sacred and noble, you all know that this is boots on the ground, this is registration, this is getting people out, this is phone call after phone call until your ears are bleeding. But this is what we must do. Because on November 5th, we will all wake up and we will say, because of that work we did, we have embraced this blessing. And we will say to people all over this country, because of us, we are Americans and we are back. Usually in Washington, when it's my turn to speak, it's okay now, it's time to hear from Landslide Courtney. So thank you very much for the great introduction. I want to thank Rosa and the mayor for my margin of victory. That's a good day. <laughs> you know, two years ago, the eyes of the country were watching the state of Connecticut. We were at the front line of the battle for control of the United States Congress. And in the 5th Congressional District, Chris Murphy shocked the world with a huge victory in 20-year incumbent. Chris, Chris 
Owen's home today with his wife Kathy and his new baby boy, Owen. He might not be able to hear it, but let's give a big round of applause for the great family. Winning the fourth CD, Diane Farrell. She kept that race alive and competitive. And this year we're going to finish the job with Jim Hine. Now, the second interesting, uh, it took a couple weeks before we knew what the outcome was. Uh, but with my 83 vote landslide victory, we helped change control of Congress. Connecticut, number one, every vote counts. Every phone call, every voter registration, every check, small or large, mattered in a, in a race, again, that came down to one three hundredth of a percentage point in terms of winning that, that critical second congressional district. The other thing we learned out there is that 18 to 29 year old voters in the, in the United States of America can make a difference and will make a difference in terms of changing the world. I went to in 2002, only 137 students up at the University of Connecticut registered and turned out to vote. In 2008, we registered over a thousand and just about a thousand turned out and it was the best precinct in Eastern Connecticut for the Democratic side. primary caucuses, it was young voters that turned out in record no numbers and will turn out in record numbers this fall to make sure that we elect him as president of the United States. The stakes are huge. This is a defining moment in our country's history. Take in five years, 7,000 foreclosures a day, up from 5,000 just a few short months ago. We desperately need change. And as some of the prior speakers have said, the Republicans didn't talk about the middle class or the economy in their convention because they don't have anything to tell the middle class. There is only one candidate that will give a tax break to senior citizens up $50,000 or less, and his name is Barack Obama. $1,400, John McCain will keep their taxes uh, even if they are $50,000 or less. There's only one candidate that will fix the prescription drug plan. His name is Barack Obama and not John McCain. There's only one candidate that will give middle class taxpayers a break of up to 5%. His name is Barack Obama. John McCain will give them no relief with his economic plan. And lastly, there is only one candidate that will provide 34 million Americans with health insurance coverage by 2013. His name is Barack Obama, and John McCain will not provide that relief. We have 60 ways, and we showed in Eastern Connecticut and all across Connecticut two years ago about how we can lead the way. And on election night, when the eyes of the country are watching those early states and people are still voting out west, we have to make sure that we finish the job we started two years ago in Connecticut and make sure that we have a clean sleep. We elect Jim Hines to the Congress. We have a strong majority for Barack Obama that people will see all across the country. Watching that videotape of the convention was, again, really exciting to remind us of all the great speakers. But I have to say, the one guy who still stands out is the person who got himself on a plane from Massachusetts and flew out to the and saw that oxygen tank and the doctors that were helping him up the steps and were holding our breath that someone who is going through such an incredibly intensive uh, medical treatment for a very uh, invasive and destructive illness that took the life of my mother, watching him get out on that stage and pull it together and demonstrate to the people of this country how critically important we must 
make sure that we made the right choice and go in the right direction. Uh, we saw from Ted Kennedy and heard from Ted Kennedy the challenge that we all, all must pull together with as much passion and commitment as he did to make sure that we elect Barack Obama, President of the United States. of what took place uh, out in Denver, Colorado. And I'm sure for all of you, keep the kind of enthusiastic support uh, that our ticket has and the genuine nature of everyone's concern, new direction, has been embraced in the dramatic manner uh, that it was out in Denver, Connecticut. And to be joined here uh, this afternoon, Denver, Colorado. Let's when we were there, they thought it was Connecticut. That's how strong our voices were. You can bring the United States General Dodd out there. I mean, we join here with our mayors and uh, with our legislative leaders and our constitutional officers, and of course, my colleagues in the United States Congress. Isn't that Joe Courtney something? Joe was a freshman for about two seconds. <laughs> He's done more, he did more in the first six months he's held office than his Republican opponent did in the last six years. <laughs> now, I heard Chris Donovan talking about how they have 107 members in the House of Representatives here in the General Assembly, and Rosa and I have been tasked with responsibility two years ago to turn things around. You know, we only had 16 Democrats throughout all of New England. Now we have 21 out of 22. <laughs> we want number 22. We can't have a number one in our hearts. We need two out there to help make sure that Jim Hines. Joe has so well articulated, the, the job that Chris Murphy has done uh, has just been extraordinary. And of course, uh, we wish uh, he and Kathy and Owen well. How spectacular to have uh, a summer. How blessed we all are, and especially them. We wish them all our best. I know that Chris is here out there rooting for us as well. Do you know what is enough? Grace, and dignity, and nobility, who taught us a lot about what it is to be part of the family person that was willing to move there, person who was willing to go out and speak to the people, and speak to the people about a man she knows well, a person that everyone in this audience knows extraordinarily well because of everything throughout his life that has been devoted to moving this nation forward and caring about the people he's sworn to serve. Don't take it. But no one said it more eloquently or more often or captured more hearts than Jackie Clay Dodd. setting cathedral-like because of his love and devotion to our country and the sacred vow of the rule of law and the Constitution. No one elevated it higher than the United States Senator Chris Let's 
legislation in the House of Representatives. Rosa DeLauro! <laughs> Republicans gathered in Minneapolis was where we there. <laughs> and uh, well, you know, I always believe that it's great to be graceful and respectful. And after all, they went there to their convention and they decided they were going to have a marriage, rich and a divorce at the same time. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? They decided, they decided, rightfully so, in John McCain's choice of Sarah Palin, that they were going to marry their base. Oh, no, 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 please, Grace. They were going to marry that wing of the Republican Party that is vested in those values. And I guess in the vetting process <laughs> and in making these decisions and as Don said, their willingness to adopt change, we should applaud them for 24 years after Geraldine Ferraro was making a decision. <laughs> This would be that they are making steps. We like to point out that we had someone running for president of the United States. Race, race, race. And so they had this marriage because John McCain, who had to make himself over several times, had to go through this marriage because apparently one or maybe two of his other choices would have caused people to walk out of the convention. <laughs> so they had this marriage. And you know, you gotta imagine what this betting process is like. So you gotta give them credit. At least on two fronts. In this betting process, the decision had to be made. Number one, she is a better shot than Dick Cheney. <laughs> Now she can field dress a moose. Okay. Now, with respect to the other criteria, we'll let the American public decide on that as they go forward. But he also had to have a divorce. John McCain then the next night divorced himself from George Bush in the last eight years. But we're not going to let that happen. Because as everyone has said, we've got a lot of truth to tell about this campaign. He was talking about his most recent trip to Europe. And he said how humble he was in Germany when more than 200,000 people turned up. You know, he said, I, I'm humble because I know I stand on the shoulders of those who have come before me. And especially another young, charismatic, who went from the 1960 to face a similar kind of election. But here's what Obama said. Obama said, look, they were not there for me. They were there for the symbol that I represent, America. They were there that resides in America, the possibility that he represents not only to people around the globe, but more importantly, to people here at home. And as he has pointed out along the campaign trail on more than one occasion, the change, the change you've been waiting for is you. The change you've been waiting for is you. And so, my fellow Democrats, independents, 
and Republicans, and those that believe in taking this country and establishing ourselves again as the great possibility for the world, roll up your sleeves. Get out there and begin the work that you know you need and knows to be done. John McCain ended his speech by saying, fight, 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 fight. <laughs> Bring it on! Democrat!